Hello everybody, it's Walter, your favorite historian, educator, professor, and social studies extraordinaire, here today to offer some perspective on why I believe America needs universal health care. Part one. The health care system in the United States of America, as you all know very well, is fundamentally broken. All right. In spite of laws such as the Affordable Care Act, a.k.a. Obamacare, and laws on the state level, which all but compel people to have health insurance, millions of Americans still lack basic health coverage, all right, let alone access to more specialized, detailed care. The United States of America, if you didn't know, is the only first world country that does not guarantee health coverage to all of its citizens. Pathetic, all right? In the United States, as of 2021, 2022, some 30 million Americans still lacked any form of health insurance. That's roughly 9% of the U.S. population. More specifically, the state with the lowest number of uninsured persons was Massachusetts, with only 3% lacking any health coverage. Other states with less than 5% of the population uninsured include Rhode Island, Vermont, Hawaii, and Minnesota. Uh, not coincidentally, all of these are what? Blue states. By contrast, the state of Texas had the highest number of uninsured people, all right, at 18%. Pathetic. Other states with high numbers of citizens without coverage include Oklahoma, Georgia, Florida, and Mississippi, all of which have more than 13% of the population without health insurance. Again, not coincidentally, these are all red states, okay? As a result, countless individuals, folks, still rack up thousands of dollars in medical bills, many of which will end up in bankruptcy. That means those debts will likely be discharged and end up passed on to everybody else by way of the hospitals and insurance companies hiking up rates to make up for their losses, all right? At the end of the day, we all lose here. An indisputable reality is this. Healthcare in the United States of America is very expensive. That's a fact nobody knew, huh? All right. And outside of getting health insurance uh, through your employer, which is the most common way in the U.S., uh, or through Medicare uh, or Medicaid or, uh, you know, or both. All right. Both of these programs have very stringent requirements. Medicare, obviously, is for people over the age of 65, 65 and older. And Medicaid is for very, very low-income people. The states, of course, decide the eligibility. All right. Health care is simply out of reach for millions of people, like I said, in spite of the Affordable Care Act. Right? Health insurance in America basically remains the same way almost as it was 60-plus years ago, a case of the haves and the have-nots. If you can afford health insurance, great. If you cannot, oh well, make it the best way you can. All right, and that's not that's not the way it should be. All right, not in the richest and most abundantly prosperous nation in the world. So here are some compelling facts on just how broken the American healthcare system is. With its private slash employer based healthcare system, the United States of America spends seventeen point eight percent of its GDP on healthcare in general more than any other single nation in the world. And the results of that health care vary greatly from state to state in this country. This you know already. By comparison, Canada spends 11.7%, Germany spends 12.8%, France 12.4%, and the UK 11.9%, and Japan 11.1%. Notice the trend. These are all first world uh, abundantly wealthy countries. All right. Next, the United States spends more on health care per person than any other single country in the world, with the government spending some $10,687 annually per person as of 2021-2022, and individual cost being approximately $1,225 per year per person. In Germany, the government spends approximately $6,524 per person, uh, and individuals on average spend $858 per year. In France, the government spends 4980 and individuals 489 per year. And lastly, in the United Kingdom, the government spends approximately 4,725 pounds and the individual spends 663 pounds per year on average. In all other prominent first world countries, including the UK, 
Canada, France, Germany, Japan, Australia, New Zealand, and South Korea, just to name a few. 100% of the population is covered with health insurance, with virtually none of these countries allowing the private insurance market uh, to exist for purposes of covering procedures not included in the government-run health care systems. All right? The United States of America has the lowest life expectancy at birth, the highest death rates for avoidable or treatable conditions, and the highest maternal and infant mortality, and among the highest suicide rates in the world for developed first world countries. The United States has the highest rate of people with multiple chronic conditions and an obesity rate nearly twice the OECD average of first world countries. Americans see physicians less often than people in most other countries and have among the lowest rate of practicing physicians and hospital beds per 1,000 in population. Screening rates for breast and colorectal cancer and vaccination for flu in the U.S. are among the highest, but COVID-19 vaccination in the U.S. trails many nations. America has the highest rate of infant and uh, maternal deaths of any first world country the highest suicide rate, and the highest number of preventable deaths of any first world country. Pathetic. <sighs> in spite of all this data, there are millions of people in the United States who still believe that America's healthcare system is A-OK, -okay, solid as a rock, and doesn't need to be fixed because it ain't broken. I don't know what rock they're living under, but that's not my business, all right? They believe that healthcare should be a personal choice, not an obligation of the government. I disagree wholeheartedly. This is an issue that I feel very, 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 very passionate about and am unrelenting, all right? In my opinion, health care is a human right, not a privilege, not an option, okay? A healthy citizenry is a nation's best resource, a nation's best asset. For if you do not have health, what do you have, okay? Bottom line. How could anyone with any moral credentials oppose health care for everybody? When health care is had by everybody, we all win. What is so hard to understand about that? There are those who are bothered by the potential costs of implementing a universal health care system. But I got news for you. The amount of money we spend on defense annually would blow your mind. But nobody complains about that. All right. At the end of the day, we all pay more for health care in the long run by not having universal health care in some form in this country. People in America still die every day because they cannot afford certain medical procedures. If you find that okay, then I question your moral fabric. I'm not better than you. I'm not better than anybody. But I severely question where your morality lies. If you think it's okay for people to die because they can't afford a medical procedure when there are more than enough resources here to cover that medical procedure. America's healthcare system undoubtedly provides excellent medical care for those who can afford it, but it is dismally poor for those who cannot afford it. All right, and it should not be that way. Thus, I make the argument that America needs universal health care for all of its citizens, regardless of age, sex, income status, prior conditions, or any other superficial concerns. So, I conclude in saying that a universal health care system while certainly likely having some drawbacks, would undoubtedly be outweighed with the true benefits to this country. And having watched this video, I now invite you to move on to video number two, entitled America Needs Universal Health Care, Part Two, Possible Forms of Universal Health Care in the United States. So I thank you so much for having the pleasure of your time for these 10 minutes. I hope you learned something. I even better, hopefully I might have changed your perspective or pushed you at least more toward the side that America needs universal health care. All right, and I conclude with the words of my teaching role model, Mr. George Feeney. Believe in yourself, dream, try, and do good. Take care, and I'll talk to you at the next video. Professor, out.